A return to how life was at the start of 2020 is some way off. Even after lockdown restrictions are eased, coronavirus is still affecting our lives in many ways. We don't know what will struggle to get back to how it was before and what might change forever. The tsunami-like impact of a global pandemic has a way of drowning out foresight. Right now, it feels impossible to predict what the world will look like next week, let alone next year. The changes in progress, some predictable, others still hard to fathom, started brewing as soon as case counts began to escalate. Large-scale social and behavioral changes, only some of which we can begin to predict, will follow the global catastrophe. With the rapid spread of coronavirus, people all over the world have had to drastically change their lifestyles. The scramble to contain the outbreak has varied from closing bars and restaurants to full-scale lockdowns. Depending on where you live, the world may seem to have come to a screeching halt. As we increasingly choose or are encouraged to stay home rather than take any transit at all, the question of how to fill the many hours becomes pertinent. Much remains uncertain, but analysts say the pandemic and the measures we are taking to save ourselves could permanently change the ways in which we live, work, worship and play in the future. Envisioning that post-pandemic world is key in ensuring we change for the better, not the worse. Other than all of these macro changes, COVID-19 has changed our daily routines and the very possible rhythm of our lives. Take something as fundamental as our experiences of space. Our mobility has become severely restricted, reduced to jogs or walks a few kilometers around our homes. Perhaps less obviously, the lockdown has also affected our experiences of time. For example, many of us will have already lost track of time, wondering which day of the week it is. It feels a bit as if time has come to a standstill. There is a feeling of being stuck in the present, combined with the inability to plan ahead. We currently don't know when we can see our loved ones again, or when we can go on a holiday. Most severely, Many of us don't know when we will go back to work or indeed if we have a job to go back to. In the middle of the crisis, it is hard to imagine a future that looks different than the present. With social distancing, masks and sanitizers in place, people took time to bring into place strict practices about being distant and careful of touching surfaces. The rush on the roads outside came to a halt too. There was less noise and air pollution, which eventually came back again after the lifting of lockdown. Being locked in confined spaces was an especially tough time for senior citizens and small children. The top three essential goods and services, which the elders had difficulty in accessing during the lockdown, were access to food, groceries and medicines, followed by access to domestic help and banking services. The elderly were facing a three-pronged struggle, high health risks, challenges of social isolation and battle of survival due to loss of income. Being forced to live in confined spaces led to unhealthy isolation. They had no change in scenery and were devoid of fresh air and daily doses of physical fitness in the form of walks and yoga in the park. Children are used to frequent outing and faced a hard time too, dealing with problems like anxiety and depression. Small children especially had to stay indoors, which is a situation hard to adapt to in a young age. Newborn children being unable to step out stay at the receiving ends of low immunity due to denied exposure to the environment outside. For most people living in societies and apartments, seeing their neighbors living right next door became unknown suddenly. To keep your distance despite being close was a tough practice to inhibit, especially when the drop in social interactions was affecting the mental health of many. We became tech-dependent for the long haul. From Zooming clients to neighborhood WhatsApp groups to online classes, digital platforms have become the only way for many of us to work, get fit or be educated and entertained. We are more relaxed about screen time hours for us and our kids, a huge culture shift from just a few weeks ago. It feels unlikely that it will disappear overnight. Among younger people, increased media consumption was observed. With no touch orders, small wedding functions and celebrations amongst many other things, we witnessed many unpleasant situations too. 
but people indulge themselves in long lost hobbies and creative and productive activities to keep their days going and maintain a healthy state of mind in all of this mess and the doomed period of time we managed to find our own small ways to adapt and let life move on in the new set ways together humanity as a community will pass through this gradually as amid the negativity we continue with our search for small beautiful things that matter